Good morning, church. Happy Independence Day to you. You know, it's not very often that the actual date of July 4th falls on a Sunday. And since, it's do since it does this year, we'd like to do something special. And before our worship begins, I'd like to invite you to stand and let us sing the Star Spangled Banner together in honor of our country and Independence Day. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous light all the ramparts we And you may be seated, and now let us begin our worship. Amen. Now, as our opening act of praise, I invite you to stand for our opening hymn, God of the Ages.
invite you to remain standing so we don't have to do exercises in church. But welcome. It's good to be with you this morning. We're glad that you're here and believe that because you're here, because you chose to come and to worship with us today, that we're a little bit more complete as the body of Christ. Amen? I'll invite you to show us that you're here by filling out your registration card that you received when you walked in. And you can put that in the offering plate later in the service as a reminder that our, we offer our presence to God this morning. I'll invite you to take a deep breath now and to let it out. To let out the distractions and the things keeping you from worshiping this morning and to breathe in the presence of the Holy Spirit Remembering that God is closer than the air we breathe. Let us pray. God, we are grateful for your presence with us this morning, and we thank you for that. We pray that as we sing, as we listen, as we pray, and then as we go, that we might be the body of Christ for a world in need. Amen. Alright, let's sing Thrive together. Here we go, church. Here in this worn and weary land where many a dream has died. Like a tree planted by the water, we never will run dry. Some living water flowing through. God, we thirst for more of you. Fill our hearts and flood our souls with one desire. Known we bear your name on 
Well, I want to say good morning to the folks that are online watching, and good morning to y'all, and happy 4th of July. So, do you want to play a game? Games in church, it's pretty fun, huh? What do you think? Do you know how to play Simon Says? Okay, so let's, y'all can join us too, the 830 service did. Okay, so Simon Says, pat your head. Simon Says, pull your ear. Simon says, wave at everybody. Wave, wave. Put your hands in your lap. Oops, Laura. Simon didn't say that. Okay, y'all are done. So what was your favorite part of this game? Was it listening or was it doing? Doing? You like the doing yeah. part? Yeah. Well, we're going to hear a story today from James. And he tells us that it's just not enough to know about God, but we have to do things that show people about God. So what are some ways that we can share God with other people? Go to churches and tell sermons and, I don't know, sing. We'll let you do the sermon next week. There's also important things when he dies on the cross. Oh, that's true. Okay, amen, I'm done. (laughs) Okay. Well, so here's some things I know you can do. You can be kind to others, right? You can, very important, that's right. And you can also um, help people who are hurting, right? You can, if people have, like, scratches, they can get band-aids. Oh, yes, for sure. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And then you can show, tell people that God loves them. Because some people just need to be reminded of that. Okay? Can you do that this week? Y'all are great. Okay, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the love that you give us and for the freedom that we have in our country to worship you. Lord, we thank you for these children and their families and ask that you bless them as they go. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Sandy. This is the time in our worship service where we go to God in prayer corporately as the body of Christ, and also we prepare our hearts for the offering, for giving just a portion of that which God has blessed us with. I invite you now to join me for a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Our most holy and gracious God, we give you so much thanks for this opportunity to gather as your people here today, to worship and praise your name. Especially on this day, we lift up our country. We lift up those who have served our country and those who are still serving. We lift up those who have died in service to our country. And we lift up in gratitude the blessings and the freedoms that their sacrifices have afforded us. We pray for our country as we pray for all countries. We ask that your guidance and and discernment be among our world leaders and that we be a country which strives to serve the greater good in all that we do. Holy and gracious God, we know that there are those who are hurting or those who are ill or sick. We lift those in the power of our prayer to your healing and your safekeeping that they may know and feel your presence and by the power of our prayer know that they are part of us. We give you thanks for the abundance that surrounds us for this very opportunity to worship in freedom, for the fact that you have asked us to give a part of which we have been blessed with back to you. And as we do so, we ask that you bless our offering, that it be multiplied countless of times over to bring your kingdom here on earth. And now, let us say together the prayer that your son son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Ushers may come down for this morning's offering. Our scripture this morning comes from James chapter 1, 19 through 26. 
It's from the New Testament. If you're opening your Bible and you want to look at one of the later chapters, and James is writing to the 12 tribes of Israel and to us. Know this, my dear brothers and sisters, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to grow angry. This is because an angry person doesn't produce God's righteousness. Therefore, with humility, set aside all moral filth and the growth of wickedness and welcome the word planted deep inside you, the very word that is able to save you. You must be doers of the word and not only hearers who mislead themselves. Those who hear but do not do the word are like those who look at their faces in a mirror. They look at themselves, walk away, and immediately forgot what they were like. But there are those who study the perfect law, the law of freedom, and continue to do it. They don't listen and then forget, but they put it into practice in their lives. They will be blessed in whatever they do. If those who claim devotion to God don't control what they say, they mislead themselves. Their devotion is worthless. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. That, that song gets me every time. But yes, we are, are starting a series on the dog days of summer, and we're walking through the book of James. And uh, this is going to culminate at the, at the end of this month. Uh, we're having a, a fancy Hawaiian meal as we welcome in our new senior pastor, Reverend Mike Ramsdale. So get your Hawaiian shirts ordered so you'll be ready for that as we're doing this. Uh, but before we jump into that, I got to say happy Independence Day. Happy 4th of July. It's great to see you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Great to see you, the choir. You look amazing back here. Uh, and special thanks to all of our, our servicemen and women who have served. We have a, of course, we have a national anthem before the service, and we've got a little treat at the end where we are doing the salute to the armed forces. We're going to play all the songs for all the branches uh, of the military, but I'm going to shamelessly uh, use our veterans as, as a as a illustration in my message. And so if you would please do me the favor, if you would partner with me for one moment, could I get all of our veterans who are here, just stand up for a moment so we can see you, lay eyes on you. Oh, wow. Wow. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. Like I said, we'll be doing more at the end. But I wanted to go ahead, and if you know them, and if you don't, I encourage you to, to introduce yourself to, to one of the people who, who stood up. But for those of us who know, and I was remarking on this during the early service, they're very active in our church, in our community. These people took this commitment of, of service and, and apply it to their lives in, in so many so many interesting ways. And I just, I really, really appreciate that. I have a pen pal who is a pastor in another country, a friend of mine I went to school with, where they do not enjoy the same freedom uh, that we do here. That tyranny is not just something in a history book. It's, it's a real life experience. And so we're so grateful uh, for those uh, in, our midst, in our community who decided to commit uh, to doing something to make the world a better place for all of us. And I've enjoyed personally getting to know some of our veterans, and I'm going to uh, single out a couple of you and just give an example, just tell you a story. Uh, the first one I want to mention, his name is George Robertson. He's right there. He's like, if James Bond were from a tiny Texas town, that's, that's what he's like. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, we were at a special event, and I needed help serving communion. And this is something that us, us normal people find a little bit intimidating because you have to give like little cups of juice to perfect strangers. And I asked George to help me and he just doesn't seem to be bothered at all by this task. And then it hit me, if you have refueled jets 
while flying over the Pacific in wartime. Giving someone a little bit of juice, it really doesn't stress you out at all. <laughs> that's just not, that's not going to move the needle for you if you've had that life experience. Uh, and, and another that I, I'm so honored that I got to know, of course, is L retired Lieutenant Colonel Tony Waterbury. Tony, would you give us a little wave? I can see you right there. Thank you. Thank you. In 2019, I got to take a group from our church to, uh, to Israel to tour the Holy Land, and Tony went on that trip with us. Before we went on the trip, Tony, I don't know if you remember this, but you came to me, Tony came to me and asked my permission to go on the trip because he would be turning 84 on that, on that trip, turning 84. And I know Tony really well, and I, I said to him, Tony, I'm pretty sure you, you got a better chance of making this trip than I do. I have used up my warranty in advance, and uh, between the two of us, I'd, I'd bet on you. And while on this trip uh, to Israel, the United States has donated to Israel a copy of the Liberty Bell. And it's in a park, and it was close to where we're staying in Jerusalem. And I asked Tony, I didn't tell him why, I didn't tell him what, but after a long day of walking and seeing things, I said, Tony, will you go on a walk with me? And Tony, being this wonderful person he is, he didn't question my wisdom of us walking on tired legs after such a long day. He just went with me, and I got the joy of introducing a national treasure to a facsimile of a national treasure. <laughs> and you know, unlike the real Liberty Bell, there's no one there to panic if you touch it. So that was a, a joy to get to do. And this past year, during the pandemic, and when things are so challenging, where we just didn't know what to do in life as a church, as a people. I, I called Tony again and asked for his wisdom. And he came up to the church and we had a conversation about how even in the face of this plague, we aren't powerless. We can really do something. You can find the video of that conversation on our YouTube channel. And if I just said nonsense words to you, you search and on some sort of type of search engine, let me, ref let me start over. You find a teenager to search <laughs> in a search engine, name of our church, Tony, YouTube, and it'll pull it up. And I encourage you to go and watch that and, and listen to the wisdom that, that he shared with us that day. And I went back and watched it again recently as I was preparing for today because I was thinking about this series, about what we are entering into as we are thinking about how do we come out of a slump? I don't know about you, but summertime does feel a little bit like a slump. You always think things are going to slow down, but they don't. There's just more things going, and you're not really recovered from the spring. And oh, by the way, as I already mentioned, 2020 just was one for the books, one that we'll be telling our, our grandkids about. And it's affected us here. I think life at the church has been hard. Oh, believe me, there's light at the end of the tunnel, and we are celebrating and parading, but it's, it's been a very hard season for us. And I don't know about you, but in hard seasons and times like this, I do feel a little powerless. I do turn on the news and feel like there's just nothing that I can do. Or I look at my own life and my slump and just not sure what to do today. And again, I feel a little bit powerless. Thankfully, these scriptures have a word of encouragement for us. Because the thing is, we're not powerless. We're so grateful and we celebrate each and every week the fact that God, as the scripture says, be a doer of the word. Don't just be a hearer, be a doer of the word. And it can say that in, in bold print because God is a doer of God's own word. We're here because God became flesh and walked here among us. Didn't just look at us from a distance through space and time. No, came down, walked among us, loved on us, even the worst of us, and offered us the ultimate freedom with no price, no stipulation, no fine print, just ultimate love, grace, mercy, and freedom offered to each and every one of us. And that love and that grace, it's transformative. 
transforms our lives, and put us on the right path, transform our community and this world. And all we have to do is to respond. Now, I know when you, I, like you, sometimes if you look at the problems in your own life, in your community, in the world around us, you think, I see what I'd like to do, but I don't even know where to begin. I've had an experience like that this week. I have a four-year-old daughter who's decided that she likes Legos. Now, she's not going to put the kit together. She wants Papa to do it. Well, uh, I don't know if you know anything about Amelia's Papa, but he's basically useless at all practical tasks in life. That's why I became a professional speaker. This is the one thing. (laughs) This is, this is all I got. Yeah. yeah in a post-apocalyptic situation, you don't want to be around me. I will not help your little tribe. Uh, but, and it's just, I've always been intimidated by the things. You know, like, I can't build a whole Volkswagen. That's why I don't build Volkswagens. But you know these Lego kits, they come with little instructions in each page. There's just, you just do this one thing. You take this one step. And before you know it, you've, you've turned a few pages and you've, you've made it something. We know that in our life. We know that uh, to begin your exercise program, you're not going to be a bodybuilder on day one. You start with one little thing. We know with our, with our diets, we're not, we're not suddenly going to completely change all of our habits and suddenly feel better. And li- No, we just start one meal, one day at a time. And we do the same as our church. As the book of James is calling us, be, be a doer. Do it one step at a time. And I assure you, and and Scripture promises that God will meet you there. God will bless that effort. God will be present with you. I've got a couple of examples of how that's happening right here in our church right now as we speak. We, as a church of our size, we have so many different tasks and so many different ministries and moving parts and things going on, and only so much money to hire staff to do that work. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about just putting meals together. I'm talking about real staff work responsibilities. And so we now have a program where we are hiring staff, not just volunteers, but staff. And we are paying them the very impressive sum of $2 a year. I'm serious. We... (laughs) We have a task of of people who have decided not to just be on the sidelines, but to be doers, but to live out this faith and and to have some skin in the game and to be involved. And we began with our facilities team. We have a group of people who have submitted themselves to this task. They're committed to being here weekly, to helping set up classrooms, helping do little repairs around the building, to help to clean up so that when guests come in here, when people come here looking for answers, they feel welcomed. They see the place ready for them to come in to learn more about God and to meet nice people. Because just like at your home, you want it to be clean when you're welcoming guests, so do we. Even the lights up here behind this stained glass window, again, they didn't ask me to fix them. I can't. But our $2 a year staff, they're invested. They're doers. They're even so concerned for the life of this church that our van was broken. And this team of of facilities of $2 a year staff took it upon themselves to raise the money to have it fixed so we could use it for our youth mission trip because they have ownership because they're answering the call to be doers. They know that they can make a difference. I've got another example, our very own, I'm going to pick on you because you're right here, Miriam Ward, will you, will you wave at us, Miriam Ward? Miriam organizes our blood drive through the Carter Blood Care Center, and we have a blood drive next week, and she came up to me this morning, and she told me, and this is in the news, this is no joke, that our, our blood banks are so low that surgeries have had to be postponed. Now, I'm not talking about some other country, I'm not talking about some other state or some other city, right here, our very own, our real neighbors, the people who are really close to us are having to have surgeries postponed because we don't have enough blood. And you know, the blood drive is here. 
All you got to do is show up. You don't even have to leave the parking lot. And you can be a doer. You can be caring for your neighbor and sharing love and life with someone who is suffering. I've got another opportunity, another thing that's going on, another exciting thing. Carly is starting to organize our growth groups. These are just small groups where you just show up once a week and you pray with one another and you talk about things that are going on. You just show up and it makes such a difference. If you've ever been a part of one, as I have, you know that it can make such a difference in your quality of life and your week to be able to meet with people who care about you and praying for you and people you can just talk to no matter what's going on, when you feel powerless, when you feel like you don't have the freedom that God has promised us. And we're still looking for people to come to them, to sign up, to help them, to host them, to be doers, to make a difference. So you can contact Carly if that's something that you are interested in. But there are just ways that we can take this and engage with it. I've got one more. Feed our kids. Thank you. Someone in the back was vigorously pointing at the screen for me to point this out. Yeah, this, that's this week. This week is big week, and you can volunteer today. And although that date is wrong, anyway, I'm not going to criticize the slide. I'm just going to talk about it. But there's a way you can sign up and be a part of feeding our kids. What is it, over 800 meals a day? Am I correct, Deb Shivey? Ish. That's pretty good. I could pull that out of my head. I don't know a lot of things, Deb, so that's amazing for me. But that's something else that's happening right here on campus in a way that we can be a part. I'm mentioning this, this list of, of things to just show you. All of us can make a difference. All of us can be a part of that. All of us can have an impact on the lives of our neighbors, for people around us. When we turn on the news, when we think about things going on, when we worry about our families, when we worry about ourselves, we're not powerless. Thanks to the grace of God, we can make a difference. So this month as it's the dog days of summer, and it's crazy hot outside, and we still feel a little bit of the slump of 2020 and all else that's going on, let us remember that God's grace is present with us. We don't have to be in a slump. We can make a difference, and we can make a difference today. I'm going to be reading the book of James this month. It's really short. You can do it in one sitting if you want or spread it out. We'll be talking about it throughout July and looking forward to the end of month whenever we uh, put on our Hawaiian shirts and we celebrate. But let's pray that God move here amongst us and show us how we can be doers of the word and not just hearers. Amen. A good reminder of being doers of the word is communion, where we celebrate that we are all part of the body of Christ. Because when we receive communion, we receive a piece of the loaf, and each of us, when we consume it, has a piece of the body of Christ in us. What a reminder of the promise we have in God. So we remember the night where Jesus gathered with his friends. He took an ordinary loaf of bread and broke it. gave thanks, said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, and said, drink from this to all of you, for this is the cup of forgiveness. This is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of many. As often as you eat and drink these things, remember me. Let us pray. God, pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and cup so that they might be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we can go be the body of Christ redeemed by your blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I invite those forward who are helping with communion, I'll remind you that this is an open table, which means that whoever you are, whatever you've done, you are welcome to come and receive the body of Christ. Because this isn't our table, this isn't the Methodist Church's table, this is God's table.
ushers will help you get through the side aisles and then you can receive communion at the altar. Dick was waiting for instructions. <laughs> and then you can exit through the center, or go back to your seat through the center aisle. The table is ready, all are welcome. a place for sin and shame a powerless where my heart has peace with God and forgiveness for all the love ever found comes like a flood comes flowing down at the cross at the cross I surrender my life I'm in all of you I'm in all of you where you love my sin washed white, I owe to you, I owe to you, Jesus. I'm in all of you. Will you love red, red? My sin washed white. I owe to you. I owe to you, Jesus.
Let us pray. God, thank you for this gift of communion. Let it nourish our soul so that we can go and be the body of Christ to the world. Amen. As we close our worship service and sing our last song, I'll invite you to think about offering yourself as a Christian disciple in this church. That is, if you want to become a church member here, whether it's uh, transferring from another faith community or maybe for the first time, I'll invite you to come down during this last song. Please stand. I'm going to sing a song that I know you all know really well. So I'm hoping that we can sing it super loud and you won't even depend on me to lead you because...
want to introduce to you Quentin or Quint Allen. Quint is a young adult in our congregation who I've gotten to know over the last couple of months. He's active with the young adults. He even helps out with the youth group sometime. And so we're excited to extend an invitation to membership to Quint today. Now you have a part to play in this too. So I'm going to invite you to pick up the red hymnal in front of you, dust it off, and turn to page 38. All right, everyone there? No, okay, I'll give you a second. All right, Quint, as a member of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? And if so, say, I will. I will. As members of the con this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? And if so, say, I will. I will. Members of this household of God, I commend to you, Quint, to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant to faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit so that you may live in grace and peace. Amen? Let's welcome Quint. Quint's got a special cheering section over there. After the service, Quint, I'm going to invite you to come shake hands with me. So if you don't know Quint, get to know him. We're going to, uh, just like when a baby is baptized and we say we're going to teach him VBS or we're going to teach at VBS, we're going to pray for him, we're going to teach Sunday school, you can't help Quint at VBS because he's a little too old, but you can pray for him. You can join small groups with him. You can invite him to lunch because we're called to be in community together. Grant, would you send us forth to, uh, like <laughs> Dur during the early service, we argued about whose turn it was in front of everyone, so there's a little bit of, there. I'll send you forth, and then you're welcome to leave if you like, but if you uh, would like to stay, we're going to have a special salute to the armed forces. And during the armed forces, Jason, I'm sorry if I'm stealing your instructions. Uh, when your branch of the military of the military was <laughs> is displayed on the screen, if you'll stand up, and uh, so we can honor you. So as you go, may you be doers of the word, so that that this world can be transformed by the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Happy Fourth of July, everybody. Have a great week.